Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about with watercolor is your brushes. Um, does anybody remember what this brush is called? The mop. Mop brush, very good. So this brush is kind of amazing because I can get this brush wet and it doesn't drip much and it holds tons of water. I can get water all over this entire sheet in one dip, which is really handy if you're doing a sky or something like that, okay? What's this, a brush? Fan. This is a flat brush. What's this one? Pointy. The round. It is pointy. Ooh, round. It's round, okay? Oh, yeah. So most brushes are pretty much either gonna be flat <laughs> or round. Yeah. So what kind is this? Pointy. Round. <gasps> and what flat. kind is this? Flat. flat. Okay, and this one happens to be a number five round. And this one, the number uh, rubbed off of here, but this, <laughs> this I think is a number 10 or 12. Okay, so the bigger the number, the bigger the brush. But What's flat brushes, flat brushes are by the width. So this is a 5 8 inch brush, okay? okay. So that's the difference there. <laughs> so we're gonna be doing an experiment where I want you to try six different techniques that are all really handy to know to kind of have in your toolbox. You might not use all of these in the same painting, but knowing uh, what you have to work with will be really helpful. So I'm gonna start out, let me show you, tell you a little bit about the paints. Uh, this is watercolor paint, this is watercolor paint, this is watercolor paint. There's a lot of different kinds. Um, and since I love supplies, I have some of all of them. Um, this one, anybody remember what this is called? The powder. Rainbow. You're close. <laughs> these, these, are, these are pan watercolors. So if you remember, like in elementary school, maybe you had the, water, the Crayola kit. Mm -hmm. those, oh, are, yeah. those, those are pan so watercolors. But these, these aren't as cheap as those. Um, the color is a little bit better. It has more pigment and less filler. Pigment is the color. Um, but these are kind of solid, and these are a little sticky. That's a good sign. It means they'll react to getting them wet quicker, and you don't have to kind of scrub them to get them going. Um, a lot of professional artists use tube watercolors. These look a little bit more like acrylics when you, when you squirt some out of here. We're not going to use these as much um, because it's kind of wasteful. We don't have a lot of time in class to make use of these, but I'm not opposed to you using them if you, if you need one. And then we've got liquid watercolor here. So I'm gonna put some liquid watercolor in this little palette. When you use these, you don't need to fill up the squares, just a little bit. This is concentrated, and that means that you are gonna water it down. All watercolor is concentrated, and what makes watercolor beautiful is that it's transparent and the white of the paper shows through it and it makes it look vibrant and colorful and beautiful. Just like when we did our glass sculptures, remember we set them on a piece of white paper and they looked brighter than when they were on the dull table? Same thing with watercolor. So I'm going. these blue handle brushes are brand new. So I want you to be um, aware of that. When you set up your palette, I want you to get one of these trays, put a paper towel, a half filled cup and then whatever paints you're using and you're going to try to keep everything mostly in here. I have a bigger mess because I'm showing you um, more materials. So what this means, we're going to do wet on dry first. So the first word is talking about uh, the, the paint itself. The paint is going to be wet so I'm going to get some water. I'm going to uh, dilute this a little bit and we're going to see what it looks like on here. So this paint is not moving around. We get a little bit more, try a different color. So where I put it is where it's staying. And you can see this, um, this brush, it kind of can look like a calligraphy tip, with, which is kind of cool. Okay, so a bigger brush. Get some water. So you can see it's still staying where I put it. Whereas if I get, I'll try some of this now. These are new as well, so you kind of have to get them going with a little bit of water, twirl your brush in there. Don't dig into it, just gently twirl. 
Um, and then when you put it in here, you can see that even if I tilt my paper, it kind of doesn't want to leave the part that's already wet. See how it's filling that up? It went all the way to the edge. And I'd have to force it to get it to leave that, that edge. It wants to stay there. So in contrast, okay, rinsing your brush, just be gentle, little scrape on the side. I'm gonna wet this area. Sometimes it's really hard to tell, especially in the classroom, where you put the water. So if you tilt your paper, you can see the shiny areas, you can see the puddles, you want it to be fairly evenly wet. And the water color paper sucks up that water and it will dry pretty fast. So if you wet an area and then you're mixing your color and you're talking to your friend and you go back to do a technique, it may, you may need to check and see if you need to add more water because it might have dried up. So even while I was talking, it dried a little bit. So I'm gonna wet that in. Let's see what these look like on wet and see if it looks different. So now I'm touching the paper and it's Whoa. traveling. It's pretty. It is under there. It's kind of like tie-dye. So I'm gonna try this red, see what happens here. See what happens when I splatter a little bit. <laughs> now, we'll be trying some different stuff. You can see how far that already went. When we do things like this, you need to wear a cover shirt and you need to be aware of your friends that you're not slinging paint across the table at someone's uniform. But that looks pretty already. see what the yellow looks like on here. You want to try this, don't you, Riley? Yes. Okay, so that's wet on wet. We wet the paper first and then put the paint on. You can wet the paper with a color. It doesn't have to be plain water as long as the paper's wet. Okay, so let's look at, um, we're going to do salt on wet first because that takes a minute for you to see it. So I'll try wetting this with a color this time. So I'm not washing my brush out all the way every time because I, I know that these colors are going to mix and I'm okay with that. Um, and I'll show you what the tube watercolor looks like just so you can see it's thicker. So you really are going to water this down a lot more. Okay, so with salt, thanks. Look, even that, it doesn't want to leave into the dry area. So you can move your paper around. I think I want just a teeny bit more color in there. So you can see some different effects. Okay, so for the salt, it's like going to a restaurant. It's dark in there. You don't know how big the holes are on the salt shaker and you dump it all over your food and it's ruined or you can't see it and you just keep going, <laughs> put a little bit of salt in your palm first. Then you have more control. You can pinch that out of there. And the, this is a little too wet. You want it to be velvety wet. So just sprinkle it on and you don't need to dump it on here because the effect is gonna be sort of a, a starburst. Like, um, okay, this, that one's not, hasn't fully done it yet. Okay, so this one was a little dry when they put that on there. You can still see it. This one was velvety wet. See what happened here? It's pretty. This was just a few grains and the paper was more wet and so it spread out more. Um, so we'll have to wait and we'll come back and see what happens on that one. So with dry brush, you actually do need a fairly dry brush. <laughs> and you're gonna get some color on it. And then it feels counterintuitive, but you're gonna sort of wipe the color off. And it helps if you separate the bristles. And they look kind of jaggedy. And then you're gonna put it on the paper and sweep. And it's gonna catch sort of the texture of the paper let me try it with the big one. These brushes are brand new, so they kind of have to be broken in. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of this and wipe that off of there. 
so it's not super wet, and you're gonna sweep, 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 sweep. So you might think, oh, this looks kind of ugly. Why would I want to do that? Um, if you were making fur on an animal, or hair, or grass, or um, like uh, fireworks, you could layer up the look of this. And it's helpful to, to have an understanding of how to do dry brush. Okay. Um, drips and splatters. You already saw a little bit of that. I'm going to show you the toothbrush method. So you want to get that, get that wet. Ooh, this is a super stiff toothbrush. Could you go grab a different one for me? Um, so in the meantime, let's let's look at doing it with the paintbrush. So you want to have a fairly wet brush here, and so that you don't. If we were outside and we were in play clothes, sort of, that would be different, but we're trying not to sling this all over the room. So you want to have your brush directly over the area that you want to do it, and use your finger as a place for the brush to stop. And just little taps. Okay? Little taps. That's it. Now you could pull the bristles back and it would spray, but it would spray everything. And you could, you could go like this and it would spray but again it might go all over the place but this is pretty fun to do let me show you with the toothbrush so you need to get the toothbrush wet you need to soak it with some color and here's the method with this we're gonna call this like the water gun hold the toothbrush in your non-dominant hand take your trigger finger here and pull the bristles toward you so that the paintbrush shoots away from you Okay, I'm pulling the bristles toward me. Cool. So it looks kind of like spray paint. Okay, so that's fun. Another fun thing that you can do is actually spray your splatters. So this is a teeny spray bottle, and you can see that they'll start to spread out. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. This is all fun. Okay, <laughs> so let me get that little guy. And you can combine all these different methods. So maybe I want to spray a little bit up here in this part that's still wet and get that to spread out a little bit. Oh, that that smells beautiful. good. Okay, so the last technique is the plastic mm -hmm. on wet. And I'm actually out of plastic wrap, so I grabbed a, a grocery bag piece, so we're gonna see if this works, but I need to buy some. Um, anyway, you need a good amount of color for this to really show up kind of in the warm colors. In here too. Ooh, that's pretty. Um, keep in mind, this is more of a magenta, and this is more of a red. So if you want something to look pinkish, use the magenta. If you want it to look more pink, use more water. Get a little bit more of this. Mix some of that in there. Okay. So, the plastic on wet, there's not a lot to it. You're going to artfully crumple your plastic. Mm -hmm. So it's not a wad, but you're kind of making it crumpled and sort of flattish. And this does need to be somewhat wet. It's not going to work if it's like this dry. It probably won't show up. Definitely not on dry brush. Mm -hmm. It won't show up a lot on this because there's no painting underneath. Okay. And then you're going to put it on here and you're going to kind of smash it down, and then you just have to be patient. It has to dry like that. So we haven't seen what's going to happen yet with the salt. It's starting to work a little bit, but there's a chemical reaction that happens there, and that simply takes time. So these are your methods that you're going to try. You may discover your, some of your own methods, which is great. Um, if you need a little extra paper to try something on, we can do that. It doesn't have to be in a grid form, but it does need to be clearly labeled. Any questions?